The financial returns to investment in education will clearly vary. Here are some of the key things to think about. The first one is the subject. Some subjects, such as law, economics, mathematics, lead to substantially higher salaries. So the cash flows will be much higher, and this will affect the rate of return. The second thing to think about is the cost of the investment. One of the things which determines that is government attitudes towards subsidies. In the UK, governments have been expecting students to make higher and higher contributions to their study. This will lower the rate of return on the investment. And then one other thing to think about is the sunk costs. If you've already invested in an undergraduate degree and you're thinking about a postgraduate degree, we don't count the undergraduate costs. They've already been met. There's nothing you can do about them. We only count the costs that are still avoidable when we take the investment decision. In the south of England, a farmer is facing similar questions about investment. The company is White Sellers Group in Kent. Um, this is Europa Nurseries. The glasshouse area here is, is just under 40 acres of glass covered area with the latest facilities that we can provide. So this is what you'd see. This is now the industry standard across Northern Europe. Well, you're looking at a variety here called Piccolo. It's a specialist cherry on the vine, very high flavor. What are the biggest costs? Well, our two main areas of cost um, are firstly labor, which um, is far higher than anything else, and fuel as well. So la labor is the biggest issue that we have to deal with because the work is um, largely manual for cropping. E each week the crop has to be laid, each uh, day it has to be picked. White Salads is a large grower with a turnover in excess of 50 million pounds per year. Although the market for tomatoes continues to grow, Hugh and other producers are facing a market trend where prices are dropping and costs are rising. What's, what are the factors that have been driving prices down in recent years? The downward trend is, I think, due to um, cheaper product coming from abroad and that the standard product is, is becoming cheaper as producers move further afield and into um, lower um, labour pricing areas. Um, Morocco and even into Africa, into Senegal where the population has paid less than a tenth of what we pay here on an hourly basis. White Salads remains competitive through constant innovation and a focus on specialist varieties. So currently we've got the whole position in the UK for specialist tomato products. Right. And it's to do with putting an awful lot of technical effort in into developing um, new varieties with, with the seeds producers we have our own technical department who's developing organics with us. It's, it's a, technically, it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and that gives us a little bit of a, uh, an entry barrier to other people. And so it's, it's about being ahead of the game all the time, right. in terms of time. As they look to the future, Hugh and his colleagues realise that they must continually reduce costs. His highest costs are in the labour required to tend the plants and pick the fruit at moment of ripeness. For this, he relies on skilled labourers from the UK, Central and Eastern Europe. Yeah, we've got a very big wages bill, highly labour intensive. And we will need to automate, there's no question about that. Yeah. We will have to automate. Automation is possible now with emerging technologies in agricultural robotics. New vision and intelligence technologies make it possible for standard manufacturing robots such as these developed by TriStar Systems in Colorado to identify and pick ripe fruit. I don't know what constitutes a ripe tomato except when I bite into it, but um, certainly there are color sensors that would tell you that the tomato has turned a certain shade of red. They distinguish millions of colors so you get exactly the right shade of red when you believe the fruit is ripe enough to now pick and that it, the, the, it will be sellable in the marketplace. And there are other vision systems which can, which can do that by shape and texture and what have you. So yes, it is possible to do that kind of thing today. Robots have been used very successfully to reduce costs in high-tech manufacturing and are likely to play important roles in agriculture. 
we found recently, uh, which was not true just two years ago, that people that grow produce and package it in mixed salad mixes or package it for the consumer in the marketplace are, are now faced with a growing labor shortage. It's very hard for them to get people to work in the fields to do this. So um, it's now become economically viable for these people to consider automation. In fact, it probably is necessary. Sometimes investment decisions are made for the purpose of increasing output. But sometimes, as here, the main purpose is to try to reduce labor costs. It's about cost reduction. But it will cost about six million pounds to buy the machinery. Is it worthwhile? When the company was small, they would take fairly ad hoc decisions about investment, but now it's much more carefully thought out and the company uses investment analysis to make such decisions. This analysis requires some assumptions. The feeling is that the machinery will have to pay for itself within 10 years. Technology is changing so fast that they can't look beyond that period. And the assumption is going to be that by the end of that 10 year period, the scrap value of the machinery will be zero.